Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Anarchast, your home for anarchy on the internet. I have a really interesting episode coming up. It's uh, something I knew nothing about up until about 24 hours ago. It's a, a site called Steemit, and uh, I had heard the name before, and of course I, I'm involved in a lot of cryptocurrency stuff, so I'd heard about it, and a lot of people were talking about it, but I never really looked into it too much until Sterling Luhan put up a video yesterday talking about how great it is and how this could change everything, and essentially Steemit is a, 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 a social media site that's based on the blockchain. So that, of course, got my attention. I thought yesterday, okay, I'll just go on there and I'll just post my profile and I'll say that I'm, I'm on Steemit now. And uh, within five minutes, I had made $350 and I kept watching it. And within 12 hours, I was up to $15,000. And I was like, okay, what is this? <laughs> so uh, then I got uh, talking on there and uh, people said, oh, the at least one of the people who founded Steemit is an anarcho-capitalist. And I said, okay, that makes sense, actually, because most people involved in cryptocurrency and actually creating things are anarcho-capitalists. And uh, so I got a hold of them. So I've got Dan Larimer and uh, Ned Scott coming in from Virginia. Uh, they're the co uh, founders of Steemit. And uh, they're going to tell us all about it. I've got as many questions as you guys probably do about it, especially after making $15,000 in 12 hours yesterday. I'm like, uh, this is interesting. I also know a lot of other people have mentioned to me that they've been on it for a while and they've been making money posting content on there. I don't understand how it works, and that's why we've got them on. But before we get started, I, I just want to ask you guys, how did you become an a anarchist? About uh, around 2006, I started cha uh, challenging everything I'd learned growing up, and uh, that's when I discovered Ron Paul. And uh, I started down the slippery slope toward uh, complete voluntarism. Uh, about four or five years ago, I came up with a, a mission statement in my life uh, to find free market solutions for securing life, liberty, and property, because uh, I really believe that uh, the free market has to provide security against those things, and it has to be so effective that it can uh, make governments that, by force uh, irrelevant. Um, I also believe that those are highly valuable things. So I try to use innovation, economic incentives to help people work together to uh, secure those things. And it's been a long road that eventually led to the creation of Steemit. Yeah, and I know you were telling me earlier that you were, have been around cryptocurrency since the beginning. I, I think you were even talking with Satoshi at one point over the internet. Uh, you were involved in the founding of BitShares, which actually I'd like to get into a little bit uh, a little bit later, but I really want to focus mostly on Steemit at this uh, moment in time. Uh, Ned, uh, how did you become an anarchist or voluntarist? So, uh, yeah, it wasn't too long ago. I think uh, 2013, I discovered Bitcoin. And Bitcoin was my my red pill. Was it the red pill or the blue pill? But uh, you know, I, I really woke up there, and it actually wasn't too much later that that I actually started reading. You know, some of the, the work that Dan was putting out, and don't tell him, but he's been a major influence. And uh, you well, know, he's it, sitting right beside you, just so you know. So he probably heard that. <laughs> I guess you know. So um, yeah, it's 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 been a great uh, you know journey. You know. Uh, having my eyes opened and, and you know, uh, yeah, becoming a voluntarist. I, I feel much happier in life, you know, understanding, uh, you know, the balance of the forces around us. And, and I, I feel like, you know, it's easier to see those things, you know, once you, once you, you go down the road and become a voluntarist. That's great. Uh, glad to have you both on board. And so let's get right into Steemit. Uh, as I mentioned, I didn't know a lot about it. There's a ton of questions about it all over the internet, especially since I went on and I, I made all this money just making one post and then everyone's asking questions. Some people are like, this is a scam, all kinds of stuff. And I have no idea how any of it all works, but it's actually fascinating from what I've just looked into in the last 24 hours. So let's just start with where did you get the idea for it and, how, and when did you start it? Um, I've been working on BitShares for the past several years. I started that in 2013. And through that experience, I learned a lot of things about cryptocurrencies, funding things, building communities. And one of the biggest challenges that we recognize is it's very hard to reward or distribute funds to people. Uh, we had a, a voting system that allowed you to directly vote on proposals to fund. And that didn't work. Um, There's just too much centralization in terms of uh, not everyone can focus on everything all the time. So we really looked into it and we... Uh, there, there was a moment, and, and Dan, Dan really, you know, he, he, he you know, took the idea of BitShares, which was the whole decentralized exchange thing, which, which was an idea that, that you know, um, 
we got into as we saw Mt. Gox and other exchanges in the Bitcoin industry start to go under. And so people were looking at these things and saying, you know, is this a weakness in the industry? And Dan answered that and said, well, we can build something stronger. And so, like, like he said, there was a long learning process there. But at the end of last year, you know, we started looking at other ideas and Dan started writing about the idea of mutual aid society and microinsurance on the blockchain. You know, we were basically asking the question, you know, how can we empower people to be able to help each other across this blockchain medium peer to peer? And what we came to was the realization that there needs to be a forum, there needs to be a place for people and, and, and portray their problems to other people. And once, you know, that realization was there, you know, and we had, we, you know, we knew there would be a mutability of these stories. There's also the question of, you know, how do we get the best stuff to rise to the top so that, the, you know, the important stuff is seen and responded to. And, you know, Dan's brilliance, you know, came up with the idea of, well, let's pay them to post and vote. And, you know, before long, it's, you know, I think we, we. Yeah, I think he, he nailed it. Um, I was trying to solve the mutual aid society problem. Uh, and that just means how you do distributed judging, uh, sub subjective things. And the uh, Steemit is really the minimal viable product. Uh, it's a, uh, a simplification of something that was being required to do mutual aid that we thought, hey, this could actually have value all on its own. If you can figure out what insurance claims to pay out, or maybe we can figure out which content to reward. And uh, then we realized that, my, that blogging could be the new mining, uh, the value is subjective, but we can distribute uh, subjective distributions. So when you look at what Steam it is, it's a way of having a large number of people, millions of people, collectively work together to distribute the mining rewards that currently get distributed to Bitcoin miners. That uh, sums it up in a nutshell. Yeah, it's absolutely fascinating concept, uh, and uh, it's actually working in. It's actually working right now, so that's interesting. So it's not just a concept; it's actually been put into. I know it's still in beta mode, but it's actually up and working right now. And uh, I guess let's start. Well, first, first thing I just want to ask is: Is this what? What would you call this? Uh, because I heard a lot of people saying this is sort of like a uh, Facebook on the blockchain. But when I went on, it looked more like Reddit on the blockchain. How would you describe it? It's a hybrid between. Um, Facebook, Reddit, and Medium on the blockchain. Um, it, it has a very, the incentive structure causes it to be unique from all of the above, whereas on Reddit you might share a link. Uh, Steemit doesn't want to reward someone thousands of dollars for sharing a link, but if you post original content, kind of like you would do on Medium, then you can get paid for it. But it's also not only about creating the content, but also sharing and distributing right. the content. So, so what's what's really unique here, Jeff, is is that you know the database is completely public. You know, for the first time, a social network that has some popularity has given the data back to the people. Whereas Facebook, Reddit, Medium, Twitter, all their data is behind closed doors, and they want to find ways to monetize it without sharing you know those rewards with the public. And so Steemit being this, this public database, you know, um, or Steam is the database, Steemit is the interface. There can be many other interfaces. So, you know, we may have something that looks like Reddit and Medium today, but someone else could come along and build something with an entirely different structure. They could build something that looks entirely like Twitter and only allow, you know, 160 characters per post. So it's, it's got some, some real flexibility to it. Oh, so you're saying the Steam coin could kind of back uh, numerous things, not just Steam it. Yes. Very interesting. We've, we've had this, this wave of popularity over the last few weeks. And with that came entrepreneur after entrepreneur, third-party developers. And there's a website, steamtools.com, uh, sort of bookmarking all the different tools and applications that other people have built on this database. It's, so many have come along, I can't even keep up with all of them. And it's, it's, it's really kind of fulfilling the vision of a, a public, you know. It's a lesson in economics, too, because it's not just, you know, your content is worth X, Y, and Z. Uh, it could be your skills. Maybe you held a meetup. Maybe you wrote some code, found a bug. Or maybe you're popular and you're going to share us with a large audience. All those things cause the people in the community to give you upvotes. So it doesn't necessarily have to be your writing. Anything that you can do that's original unique, uh, adds value to the community, uh, all value being subject, subjective in nature, 
the uh, more people that can agree, the more you can make from the platform. Yeah, it's uh, fascinating, especially for us anarchists, because and voluntarists and activists, all of us out there. I know that we get wiped off of so many of these social networks. For example, past Anarchast guest and Anarcho Poco speaker Milo Yiannopoulos of Breitbart, he just got wiped off of Twitter for making fun of the Ghostbusters movie. Uh, and uh, I know Luke Radowski, past Anarchast guest, past Anarcho Poco speaker and future, by the way, uh, both of them. Uh, he uh, he's on Facebook. He's got tens of thousands of followers, and I'll see him post something. He'll get like four likes. It's, just, it's not mathematically even possible. So obviously they're censoring so much stuff. So this is the one thing that I've seen the anarchists who've kind of caught on to steam it so far, people like Sterling Luhan and, and a few others that I've, I've been following, uh, they say this is what's so exciting about it is because uh, it's much more censorship resistant. Not only censorship resistant, but founded by people who want to promote this type of content. So, uh, that's so we've got the, we could, yeah, sort of like with Facebook and Google, they've got sort of the uh, government on their side. They're, the government's behind them. So they're kind of, you know, they've got their stuff and they're censoring, but they're, you know, the government tells them to censor something, they're going to do it. Uh, we sort of got the end caps running this one. So uh, if, you know, something's ever going to get played with a little bit, it'll probably benefit the uh, free market uh, uh, thing. So that's good. That's actually awesome. It's kind of like uh, playing the other side of the, the game here. You can think of Steemit as a sort of alternative voluntary government where you have participatory budgeting. Every person contributes to the community in some way. They share what they've done with the community and they get rewarded for their contributions. Uh, and our premise is everyone who brings value to the pie should get a share of the pie. And everyone increases it. So when you come on board and you start sharing your people, you're adding value. So you, you got yeah, you know, $15,000 worth of steam uh, and by joining the community because you bring a lot of value to the community and everyone brings value and once you're part of the community you get to say over uh, what's bringing value to the community and so everyone gets rewarded proportional to their contribution which is of course all very subjective but it's not centralized you don't elect people that then decide what the budget's going to be and where the money's going to go uh, e even someone with relatively small stake can allocate parts of the budget to people. Yeah, absolutely fascinating. Let's get into a bit of the technical stuff. This is where I have a hard time wrapping my head around it. So there's a steam dollar, there's a power, steam power uh, coin, I think. Uh, I'll let you explain. Obviously, I don't even know what I'm talking about, but that, I've just found, I'm trying to figure out what these things even are at this point. Uh, first, let me just ask you, uh, th so you've got your own blockchain, I assume. Uh, this isn't going on the Bitcoin blockchain. So I know Bitcoin has thousands or tens or hundreds of thousands of computers around the world uh, running uh, you know, the software, the mining it to keep the uh, blockchain going. So how is Steam doing that? Well, we've got probably thousands of computers, haven't counted them, running around the world. Uh, each of them, you can mine Steam as well, but the consensus algorithm is a hybrid proof of stake, proof of mining. There's a little bit of an approval voting process in there. But fundamentally, our blockchain is uh, based on the same technology as BitShares uh, with, with some major innovations. Uh, your transactions are irreversible after uh, 40 seconds with 99% irreversible within just three seconds. So it's, it's very fast. And there are no transaction fees on our network. Um, the use of the site has already generated a transaction volume on the Steam blockchain similar to the Bitcoin transaction volume, and we can go scale much faster. We've uh, projected that we can handle all the transactions that would need, be needed to power something like Reddit on a blockchain today. Uh, but it's it's secured by consensus uh, using a combination of all the best technologies uh, and, and processes uh, that have come about, come about. I've written about it on my blog, but it can get very technical, so I'll you know, if you want to get any deeper. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I've, someone sent me the white paper, and I'm not a very good white paper reader. I'm not a very technical kind of person. I'm a kind of an ideas person. You tell me the idea, like I love the idea of what you're trying to do, but you get into the technical stuff, and that kind of my eyes start to glaze over over here. But uh, I know there is a steam dollar and a uh, there's a steam power. There's explain the difference between the two and how it all works. Sure. When we built Steam, we wanted to uh, try, try to identify. We wanted to separate. Uh, <laughs> so, so what the what the power and the dollars do relative to Steam? Really, it's all backed by the same token. It's really all Steam, but what Steam power is and what Steam dollars are 
they're a variant of those. They're, they're sort of, um, they're different in that there's a, a smart contract applied at the blockchain level. And, and the purpose of it is to separate the, um, the stability in the steam dollar with the leverage in the steam power. And, you know, as we were kind of designing this, we also said, how do we give value to this token so that, it, you know, it has utility for the people using it? And so steam power is not just additional leverage in the system. It's, it's the holder's ability to influence uh, the content that appears on steamit.com. The more steam power someone has, the more ability they have to promote their own posts, to reward others. Now, so to put it in terms that are uh, probably more familiar to people who have a business background, uh, steam power is like vested, long-term committed stake. You, you put it in, you can only sell it off at 1% per week, you're committed to the long-term value. And, and all voting rights are associated with those who have a long-term outlook. The steam is the liquid asset. You can buy and sell instantly, but you get no voting rights with it. And the steam dollar is always convertible to a dollar's worth of steam. There's a price feed that gets published on the blockchain by trusted oracles. Uh, and so it has a, a soft peg to the dollar based upon the fact that if you've got a steam dollar, you can ask the blockchain to convert it to a dollar's worth of steam. And if the price of steam can go up or down, the amount of steam you'll get will vary, but you always get about a dollar's worth of steam out of it. Uh, and so that gives us the, uh, the currency that we can use for building markets and commerce on top of the blockchain uh, and it's all built on the social credit of the entire community so the steam power if i'm hearing it right is more like sort of owning equity in in the steam it's sort of like being the owners of the steam you could be a part owner if you have enough steam power uh, so i could actually see someone like rupert murdoch wanting to buy up most of the steam power at some point that'll be interesting if it ever gets that far uh, but the steam dollar I, i'm confused about how you keep it pegged to uh, a value of around one dollar per steam dollar uh, how is that possible well the blockchain has control of the printing presses, which means that uh, it can create as much steam as necessary to give you a dollar's worth of steam. Right now, that's half a steam. The steam's about two dollars. But it could be two steam, it could be a quarter of a steam, depending on which way the price goes. But you're protected against the price movement, but you don't. You also don't get the ups and downs. Exposure, right. So uh, as long as you trust the people who are producing the price feed, which is a median of 19 different Uh, independently elected parties changes. It's a uh, smooth out to prevent abuse, but uh, as long as you trust the price feed, uh, you can trust that you can convert a steam dollar to about a dollar's worth of steam. So I, I just uh, posted, and I guess I got $15,000 worth of steam. I know a bunch of it went into steam power. I just looked, uh, I just looked today. Uh, I think uh, it was something like 4,000 steam power and 7,000 steam dollars. Uh, just to see how it all worked, I opened an account at, Pol I don't know how you pronounce it, Polonex? <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, whatever, Polonex or something. And uh, I transferred over a few steam dollars to there, and it transferred very quickly. And if I wanted to, I think I can just tr uh, trade those for uh, Bitcoin. Is that right? So uh, my question is, uh, who's buying steam dollars and why? So is, uh, I'll just let you answer that question. People buy steam dollars if you're wanting to hedge against the dollar, uh, hedge against cryptocurrency volatility in Bitcoin or Ethereum, and you want something that's more stable like a dollar, um, but you don't want to have actual dollars in a bank account. There's that. Steam dollars actually pay you interest. If you hold steam dollars, there's currently 10% APR interest that you're earning, which allows you to participate in some of the growth of the network. That's not guaranteed to last forever. That's a value that's published along with the price feed. So it can kind of help set the monetary policy of the steam dollar. Right. And, and, and because the whole thing is blockchain back, people are, are constantly sort of trading around parity, you know, and, and there's value in getting to consensus, you know, trading on the markets. So, you know, through that, you know, the steam dollar ends up acting like a baluster to the whole system. And, you know, people are participating in every aspect of the steam coin. If you want to arbitrage opportunities, you can buy a steam dollar at 90 cents, 
convert it to steam and sell the steam and make a little bit of money. So there's lots of people in the market that are just using the rules and the incentives in the system to keep a steam dollar around the dollar. Um, but of course, if everyone tried to sell their steam dollars today, uh, it'd fetch a lower price. Um, or if everyone tried to buy them today, it'd go higher. It's been as high as $1.30. Um, but it's significantly less volatile than a cryptocurrency. Uh, and it's you can view steam dollar as debt, steam as equity. That's an analogy that uh, many people can understand. And ultimately, um, just like any other company with their debt and their equity, if there is a major problem, that gets converted to equity and it's bail-in. So that's ultimately your steam dollars are just backed by steam, just like everything else. You're ultimately trusting that the value of the steam token uh, will be enough to back the steam dollars in existence, but, uh, which is always kept to just a few percent of the total market cap in steam dollars. So a very conservative debt to equity ratio there. Yeah, one of the things when I first posted about Steam, it, a few people came on and they said, it's a scam. And I said, well, correct me if I'm wrong, but a scam usually is where you give someone money and then you lose your money. As far as I can tell with Steam so far, you post some content and then you make some money. Uh, so how would you respond to that? I think you answered it perfectly. <laughs> uh, usually I take whatever argument that they use to uh, call us a scam. I replace... Um, Theme with Bitcoin, and it's usually the same rationale. Uh, you know, people. Yeah, well, there's people out there you even call Bitcoin a scam. So yeah, yeah, every, people just call things scams all the time. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. So basically, the big scam is the Federal Reserve. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, and the whole thing here is transparent. You know, it's got all the benefits of of being a blockchain, and you know, being like Bitcoin. You know, so people can come and audit the code. They can look at all the history on the blockchain. You know, there's there's Nothing hidden from anyone in the system. You can, you can view it like a whole bunch of people getting together to form a startup that has no money, and they just issue shares to everyone who does everything for the startup. And if it has value, it has value. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But the main thing is everyone uh, everyone's contribution has been accounted for, and that's how you bootstrap an economy. We sat down and we said, how would you bootstrap a cryptocurrency in a third world country with no money? Every other cryptocurrency out there is asking you, put in your money first and hope it goes up, hope you can get a buyer. And we say, no, bring your time, bring your energy, bring your attention, because uh, that has value too. And we'll give you a stake in exchange for that. And uh, then we're growing. But other than that, the, uh, the economics of the system are identical to all the other uh, cryptocurrencies in terms of um, where the value comes from. Yes, there needs to be a buyer tomorrow, the same as any other good or service or company or stock. You're uh, speculating that someone will want it in the future. Very interesting. And I know a lot of people uh, who get Steam dollars from posting content, a lot of them are say, oh, you should definitely power up. Um, and uh, uh, I, I don't fully understand why I would want to do that. What would you say to someone who wants to uh, take their Steam dollars and put them into Steam Power? Well, the system will reward you uh, for being a long-term holder. So one of the things we recognize, you know, is that in crypto, you know, when people come to support a project, they really want to be, you know, they, they want to have a long-term interest. You know, Bitcoiners want to have a long-term interest, you know. But, you know, on the same side of the coin, there's a group of people who say that speculation is the killer application in cryptocurrency. So we kind of looked through that and we said, you know, people want to be long-term. Let's reward them for being long-term. And so Steam Power does that. When you hold Steam Power, you're actually rewarded with Steam just for holding. Uh -huh. Effectively, as we pay out rewards, Steam Power holders are diluted less from uh -huh. the... I see. Very interesting. So, yeah, I totally get this now. So if I believe that Steam, it's really going to take off, if I think this is going to be the platform where most content is going to be shared, I would definitely be powering up as an investment into it. Of course, a speculative investment. No one knows what's going to happen over the next few years. Uh, but uh, if this turns out to be uh, something uh, on the lines of a Facebook or a Twitter, these are companies worth billions of dollars. So, yeah, I totally understand. Uh, very interesting concept. Well, we realized when we were trying to self-fund bit shares by uh, voting on where the printing press money went, uh, people would sell if they didn't like where things were going. And any other startup 
you invest and you have no liquidity. You can't get out immediately. Yeah, you know, sort of committed long term. So we wanted to encourage capital flow in, stick it out in the long term to make sure that when people are voting, that the costs and the outcome of the votes are shared among everyone, rather than if you lose the vote, you sell and you're out. Uh, it really creates a cohesive group where you don't profit by taking your money today or voting to abuse the system because any harm you do in the long term is just going to hurt yourself. That's great. Yeah, the, the markets always work the best. And it's uh, really a, quite a fascinating uh, way you've set this up. Uh, very ingenuity, very innovative. Uh, it's amazing. And uh, I know you only started like six months ago. So this must have been a whole whirlwind for you so far. Very <laughs> much so. I think we still have whiplash from the last month. <laughs> Yeah, I, I had on uh, Arcade City, which is another one that started about six months ago, and now it's almost competing with Uber, uh, sort of more of a blockchain uh, ride-sharing service. So these things, uh, and I know this from personal experience, I've had many startups, and uh, uh, it can be quite amazing how quickly it grows. And uh, so where's Steam it at right now, in your opinion? It's still early days. You know, we have, we have a long way to go. We have a big community to build. Uh, we have a few, you know, features, you know, in the wings right now. There's a lot of sort of basic social media features, you know, the things that makes Twitter successful or, or you know, arguably Reddit successful. These are things that, that we can add into the platform to drive a better user experience. Yeah. Private secure messaging, uh, confidential transactions, following feeds and, and sharing of things. There's uh, a long list of things, but perhaps the things that we're really excited about is even the, the security of cryptocurrency. We've, uh, with Team Power, um, we've really protected our users against most hackers. Uh, you might have seen that we were hacked a few uh, weeks ago. Um, but we created technological innovations that allow us, us to recover uh, accounts when you're hacked because your funds are locked up with time. And if there's someone who knows you, uh, and you have your old password, you can get your account back. Uh, and that's something that doesn't exist on any other crypto platform. So you're actually a lot more secure against being hacked on Steam, particularly if you're in Steam power. Uh, and that's one of the things that we really wanted to address. Is how do we solve the problems that cryptocurrencies face, not only in scalability, but usability, uh, you know, protecting people against getting hacked. Right. And, and here we are, you know, approaching, you know, potentially an application that can bring blockchain to the mainstream. And that means regular people who don't necessarily know how the technology works or how to manage private keys. So in a lot of respects, we've had to go back to the drawing board and say, how can we, you know, set this up at a foundational level so that user experience can be simple all the way through? You know, we think about the car analogy and, you know, if it was, when someone gets into a car, you know, their objective is to drive from A to B. That person doesn't necessarily know what's going on underneath the hood to make that car run. So, you know, that's what we expect for Steam. We expect it to be a, you know, a consumer-centric product, you know, that, that people use and get value from, but they don't necessarily need to know all the complexities uh, that make it work. The benefits of cryptocurrency with the utility of banking and the ease of use of social media. <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I see no reason why anyone or everyone out there shouldn't be posting their content on Steemit. Uh, it just makes perfect and total sense. Um, I plan to post all my content on there from now on, and I don't know what I, I, don't, I don't know what to expect in the future. I'm, it probably won't be fifteen thousand dollars per post, but uh, you know, just I've seen just how this can really take off. And it's like I said, for people putting out content like ours, which is a little bit uh, anti-government and things like that, uh, we're not. Being being censored. Uh, I saw, actually, it was kind of a funny story. Uh, when I was the top trending thing on, on Steam yesterday, number two was this uh, play, Playboy model who's actually in a, a show called Acapulco Shore, which is on MTV, and I actually know them fairly well. I've been in a few of their shows. I actually staged a fight for them once. It's a reality show. It's, it's kind of stupid, actually. But she, I was number one, and she was number two. So the top two people were uh, people from Acapulco yesterday. And I'm a, obviously a uh, anarchist voluntarist, and she's a uh, uh, just uh, play, playmate model, and th those were the top two sort of things. And she made a bunch of money too. I think she made five or ten thousand dollars as well. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about that because I think this is something that almost anyone would be interested in, uh, especially if you have a blog. Is uh, why wouldn't 
why shouldn't everyone just post their content on Steam? It's, and perhaps they'll only make a few cents, but perhaps they'll make a dollar or two, but maybe they'll make hundreds, maybe they'll make thousands of dollars just by putting their content on there. Steam works really well for anyone who currently doesn't have a viable way of monetizing their blog, which is 99% of all people. Uh, you might even those people, you know, I think I think to your question, you know, why wouldn't they? There's really no good answer. Why not? You know, but there is a sort of demand from the community, you know, that when you show up, there's some recognition, you know, for the community itself. So, so you know, with the introduce yourself you did yesterday is very valuable to your long term success on the platform. because People want to know that they're really dealing with you. You know, they don't they don't want to be dealing with, you know, some imposter or, any, or something like that. So I see no reason. Yeah. Why, why everyone shouldn't bring their blog to see it. Yeah, so if you're watching this and if you've got a blog, um, just post it, post on your blog and post it on Steemit. And uh, I've seen absolutely no reason not to. And I think this could, it's, it's fascinating. It's, it's This could really take off, in my opinion. And, uh, I, you know, who knows how it's going to turn out. This, that's the free market. And that's, uh, you know, I never know what's going to happen. But this thing really has potential. I'm really impressed by what you guys have done. Thank you. I really would like to uh, uh, let everyone know that it's very difficult to get discovered at first, just like anything. So don't give up if you uh, aren't immediately recognized like, like you were. Uh, there's a lot of people all trying to get, gain attention. Persistence pays. Um, and you build your social network like any other social network. You build your followers. The more followers you get, the more eyes see it, the more votes you can collect, the more money you are making. So it's an effort. You have to put an effort. Don't come to Steam and expecting to post an introduce yourself post, make thousands of dollars and disappear. Um, <laughs> people really want to uh, see your effort and what you can bring. And if you're not a good writer, that's not a big deal. There's other things you can do to add value to the platform. Yeah, absolutely. So if you're watching this, you got a blog, get on Steam it. Like yeah, I see no reason why you shouldn't, and you have a ton of potential, and actually it's a much better platform than things like Facebook and Twitter, as we've seen, uh, even Google. Uh, Eric Schmidt of Google goes to the White House once per week. That should tell you something. Uh, so these guys are the, the bad guys. Uh, this is a platform that is a totally free market, and so uh, highly recommend it. And as far as, uh, what would you say, I, is there a fairly big demand right now for things like Steam Power? Like, I'm just curious about that part because that actually basically is an investment into the potential of this uh, concept. Well, the number to look at is really, you know, how much of Steam is held in this Steam Power contract. And I believe it's, it's above 95% today. So what that means is people are acquiring Steam, whether they earned it through posting or whether they went to an exchange and, and bought it, and they're powering it up, which means they're taking it and they're saying, I want to be part of this long term. Yep. So the 95% is in that about 2% is held at Steam dollars, and the other 2% is uh, liquid Steam. And as far as the market for it, it's uh, currently being valued over $200 million on the uh, market cap measurement, which puts us at the number three cryptocurrency, um, at least for the past several weeks it has been. Wow, that's, that's absolutely amazing in only six months. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, no, really impressed. Um, I don't know if I have anything else really to ask at this moment. Uh, do you guys have anything else you wanted to add that we didn't touch on? Yeah, well, you know, you, we, had, we talked about the potential for the platform. One thing we wanted to bring up is that, you know, this can be more than just a social network. You know, we've talked about the potential for layering a sort of, of Craigslist or an eBay, you know, to, to add another dimension of an economy to this so that it's not just a social network, but you know, an online social economy, you know. Right. Uh, people and interactions, exchanges of value is what a social network's all about. All we're doing is creating an economic accounting system for keeping track of who's contributed what to whom. Uh, and money is a natural place in any social network. Uh, it's what separates one country from another. Uh, their, their money is the social network of their economy. Uh, and that's that's ultimately what this is. Uh, if you just view it as a blogging tool where you get paid and you cash out, you're missing the bigger opportunity, which is to join a new economic system uh, of people who want to have free, honest money um, rather than Federal Reserve money controlled by central parties. Um, so that's, that's the bigger picture here, is that this is about creating an alternative economy 
uh, that's being bootstrapped through social media. Absolutely fascinating. I'm uh, so excited. That I, f I actually found out what it was yesterday, and, and now I, I know a lot more. Uh, so I'll definitely be following you guys. Uh, when people are on Steam it, can they follow other people? I didn't see an easy way to do that. You can do that? There is a button that will allow you to follow people. Okay. Right now it's being logged in our database either today or probably early next week. Uh, you actually get the feeds available to you. Uh, okay. You can follow me uh, at Dan. At Nick. Yeah, but it'll start to it'll start to appear in the in the website, you know, more clearly. Actually, pretty soon, I believe we'll be, uh, you know, doing a new release in the next couple of days, just for that feature. Yeah, as I mentioned earlier, it's still in beta mode, so uh, this is very early, and there's just building on it every day. I've heard from people who have been following it for a few months that you guys have been just dramatically improving it uh, every day almost, and it sounds like you're doing it still. Uh, I'm on there. Follow me, please, uh, at Dollar Vigilante, uh, and uh, I hope everyone else gets on there. And um, uh, check it out. So it's steamit.com. I think it's also steamit.io. Is that right? Steam.io. Oh, steam.io. Steam with two Steamit. Uh, with two E's. Uh, many of your uh, audience might not know the origin of the word steam. Steam actually comes from esteem, which means to value or value. Ah. So that's the origin of the word. It's not steam as in like uh, water vapor, but. <laughs> Okay, I was wondering about that because as I was watching my money totals go up yesterday, it was like 10,000, 11,000, 12,000. All of a sudden I started humming the song Beat It, but I was like, steam it, steam it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it's just a side note, but that's interesting how uh, you came up with the name. So yeah, absolutely fascinating. Uh, please like, subscribe, and share this video. Get this out there. Uh, get this out there to anyone who produces content. Uh, let them know that they can. this is another way that they can create, uh, get uh, revenue, cr uh, get value from uh, producing content, and it's the best one I've ever heard of. And uh, So I'll be on there. I'll be on there every day. Follow me at Dollar Vigilante, and that's it for Anarchast, your home for anarchy on the internet. Peace, love, and anarchy. And I remember during the episode it was happening, I had already had these thoughts about how much, of, how much bullshit the war on drugs was. And I had all this adrenaline flowing through me and I was telling these guys what a piece of shit they were and that they were the bad guys. And I asked them, I said, hey, do you remember Prohibition? Do you remember when alcohol was banned? You know, those, you're essentially those same cops who were in the wrong now uh, invading me and wanting to kidnap me and take me to a cage. Luck on exact change. <laughs> Y'all can mail the meter receipt too. Just mail me the receipt. You got my address. Alcapulco, Mexico. This is Anarchast.